The biggest mistake you can make in this life is to think and to believe that you're smarter than everybody else. It is the kind of mistake that can prove to be fatal. And incidentally, it is a very old mistake. There was once this being who was in charge of music and worship in heaven. And they fell into that trap of believing they're just too smart. You don't know who I'm talking about? Naongea kusu shetani mwenyewe. Thinking you're way too smart makes you vulnerable. And it doesn't matter how smart you are, how clever you are. When you're very full of yourself, yeah, because this kind of people get to a situation where it gets to their heads after one or two victories, and this to them is confirmation enough that they're the smartest of the smartest, it becomes fairly easy to set a trap for you. The major discussion ongoing in our media right now is the story of the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, trying to bring order amongst the one Kenya principles. It is the story of the President desperately trying to convince Moses Wetangula, Kalonzo Musyoka, Msalia Mdavadi to back Raila Odinga as the candidate to fly the flag, the flag bearer, for the super alliance that is under construction. In my view, there are so many things about this story that do not make sense to me. And to many Kenyans who lived during the Daniel Toretich Arab Moy era as president, and there were grown ups then taking in political news and analyzing it, it doesn't make sense. Let us discuss very quickly just a few of the reasons, a few of the many reasons why this does not make sense. When the president of any country in the world calls you to state house, and this is especially true in the country called Kenya, when they call you to state house, do they call you to state house to go there and argue with him or her? Or do they call you to give you directives? Let me give you a simple practical example. Tomorrow, the head of state summons Kumekucha Chris to state house. And then when I arrive, before even the president has spoken to me, I start talking. You know, I've really been waiting for this meeting, Mr. President, Your Excellency. And you know, I wanted to tell you, you know, I wanted to advise you, I... <laughs> How now? You don't speak until you're spoken to. It is not you who has invited yourself. You have been invited. You have been given an audience with the current authority over the nation of Kenya. You know the president has handlers and advisors whom he relies on. Even if the president wants you to talk back, those handlers, those advisors, will never allow such a situation. If we are to believe what we are seeing in some of the media outlets right now, what has been going on in State House is a heated exchange where the president is being told, no, that can't work. I must vie for the presidency. I must be on the ticket in 2022, come what may. I'm sorry. Knowing what I know, I find that very difficult to believe. What I know 
is that the president will contact you personally if they know you have issues with something they're planning. And by the time the president summons all of you to state house, in virtually all cases, the president, the authority, already has all his ducks in a row. So, let us look at all this drama from completely new light. The president has long discussions, several endless meetings with Raila Odinga at State House Mombasa. What they discuss, what they talk about, is secret and remains top secret. It is not leaked to anybody. And when they are done, others are summoned. Let me simplify this with yet another example. Long, long time ago in my life, in another lifetime, <laughs> I was the head boy of a certain school. And the headmaster of that school interrupted my class and summoned me into his office where he told me what he wanted to do. Yeah, something that would be controversial, something that would raise a lot of opposition from others. And we had a brief discussion. He wanted to know my opinion. And I gave my opinion to him. And then the other senior school prefects were summoned. And we all sat together. And of course all the other senior school prefects knew that I had already had a discussion with the headmaster over this issue. And of course they had no idea what we had discussed. And many of them blamed me later for misadvising the headmaster, for failing to tell the headmaster a few simple truths, as they put it. <laughs> they felt as one of them, I had betrayed them. I had failed to vigorously defend their position. You know, in that school, the head boy traditionally had a lot of power. Not as much power as some people thought, but enough power to even get decisions reversed. Oh yes, you don't have to believe me. Anyway, my point is, the second meeting had no idea up to this day what we discussed in private with the headmaster. And in those days we had a school newspaper, just two A4 pieces of paper folded, yeah, but containing a lot of mshene. <laughs> And the school newspaper carried a story based on a leak from that confidential meeting the senior school prefects had with the headmaster. And without mentioning the head boy or the headmaster anywhere, that story put forward the position of most senior prefects and gave the impression that those senior school prefects had vigorously defended the position of the students, but somebody had sold out, somebody had betrayed the cause. A student in a very powerful position. Of course, it was obvious who they were referring to, but this story completely ignored the real story in this issue, which was something called priorities. When you go to school, what is most important? Is it the positions you get in that school? No. It is your future. And your future is very closely linked to how you perform in the final exams at that school. Period. There were no other considerations worth considering. And so, in my opinion, this is exactly what is unfolding in Kenya right now. What is all over the news is a sideshow, has no political significance at the end of the day. 
Let me break it down further. Msalia Mdavadi vied for the presidency in 2013. A vast majority of his Luya community did not vote for Msalia Mdavadi. Kalonzo Stephen Musioka vied for the presidency in 2007. Over 30% of the Akamba community did not vote for Kalonzo Musioka. Bottom line, going by past voting patterns and past real voting figures in a general election in Kenya, the one Kenya chaps are as relevant and significant in the 2022 elections as a man called Gideon Moy is in the Rift Valley. Oh yes, a presidential candidate in 2022 invited to join the One Kenya Fellows can ignore them and still win the presidency. You see in Kenya, there's one very queer habit, very strange habit, in the way people vote. Kenyans would never vote for a losing candidate. In other words, very few voters in Kenya will go to the polling booth and vote for somebody they do not expect to win the general elections, to win the presidency. In Kenya, we call it kupoteza kurayako. In other words, wasting your vote. You might as well have slept at home and not voted. How do you vote for a candidate who is going to lose? <laughs> How do you do that? I'm afraid that is the Kenyan thinking. Yeah, it doesn't make sense because in democracy you vote with your conscience. I would vote with my conscience. Many times I've voted with my conscience, knowing very well that the person I'm voting for would not win that election. But it has always turned out to be a good decision because the rest of the people have complained for five years as the person they voted in disappoints them. I have been very happy because I voted with my conscience. Not tribally, I voted with my conscience. I left a tribesmate, Kwamata, <laughs> and voted for a member of another tribe with my conscience based on what is best for Kenya. I have not yet heard analysts discussing this. But yes, Kenyans vote tribally. But Kenyans can also leave a member of their own tribe, refuse to vote for them, and vote for a member of another tribe, simply because Hawataki Kupoteza Kurayao. Oh yes, and we see this very clearly in voting trends in the country. It is consistent. It has always happened like that. Bottom line, these Oka people, or is it Oga people? <laughs> the One Kenya Alliance, as far as I'm concerned, and anybody who cares to analyze Kenyan politics and voting patterns more deeply, the One Kenya Alliance is irrelevant. It can only become relevant when a man called Raila Amolo Odinga joins that camp. But before he joins it, I'm sorry. That is the truth. However, having said all that, if I was going to face off against William Samoy Ruto in 2022, there's one thing I'd be very careful to do. I would make sure that the One Kenya Fellows are on my side for the simple reason I don't want them to join the DP Ruto camp for the simple reason that the minute William Samoy Ruto gets an alliance with the One Kenya Gang, the One Kenya Gang suddenly becomes very relevant in Kenyan politics for the simple reason I've already given you that Kenyans would not like to lose their vote on a ticket that they know we lose. As soon as William Samoy Ruto has an alliance with the One Kenya people, that, to a vast majority of Kenyans, 
will already look like a possible winning ticket. And therefore those voters will go ahead and vote on tribal emotions, knowing very well that a member of their tribe will be on the eating table of the next government. And therefore, they will somehow benefit, allegedly. In my opinion, somebody laid a very clever trap for the media in Kenya. Somebody very smart set a narrative for the media in Kenya to divert attention from what they are really going to do. And I believe it was part of the plan yeah, to set everything in motion with a leak from a confidential meeting in Mombasa, supposedly. Think about it for a minute. Even if you don't like the president, even if you don't like Raila Odinga, the handlers surrounding these two individuals, do you think they would allow a situation where their confidential discussions would leak out to the media. And I believe the way they achieved this was to use information they already had. Yeah, that there was a mole yeah, somewhere in the OK outfit. The same man who was a mole in the NASA outfit. And they knew very well that this person would breathe the deputy president's camp and they knew very well the next thing that would happen is that that information would leak out to the press and they knew that that information would be very good news for the deputy president's camp yeah because these people can't even agree on who will be the presidential candidate they can't even agree this late in the day and the impression being given is that they will never agree and therefore, the conclusion will be, Deputy President Chukwe Ikitu, Anza Kujitayarisha Kuhamia State House. <laughs> the big take-home lesson here for students of life is always assume that the other people are much more smarter than you are. Always assume that. Always no matter how smart you are, no matter how smart you think you are. Now, there's something else much more interesting that I noted and I want to share with you. The smart people who organize the alleged leak also seem to be making an effort to clip the wings of those who think they are very powerful in one Kenya. Kakamega governor, or is it Kachmega governor, Bona Wycliffe Oparanya was invited to State House Mombasa. How? Why? He's not even a party leader. However, he is a very powerful emerging force amongst the Luya. Just the kind of person. Yeah, to make a man called Msalem Davadi and Moses Wetangula worried. Yeah, anaweza kuafanya wafunge break, emergency break, watulize boli. You see, Bwana Paranya has been very smart. In his term as governor of Kakamega, which is going to complete his two terms, ten years, he has been very carefully campaigning for the future. His influence amongst the Luya community currently, yeah, according to me, in terms of votes, is bigger than that of Musalim Davadi. In other words, if one were to have a popularity election right now in Western Kenya, with the Mulembe Nation, I believe that Bwana Paranya would beat Msalim Davadi in that popularity vote. Even if it is by a slim margin, he would emerge victorious. But let us assume I'm completely wrong. I've gotten it all wrong. 
Bwano Paranya is still a big enough influence amongst the Luya. So much so that if he were to vie in the same presidential election as Musalia Mdavadi, Musalia Mdavadi would lose a lot of votes in his own Luya community. I am assuming a situation where Raila would say Musalia Tosha. And then Musalia runs and Oparanya also runs for the presidency. Musalia Mudavadi would lose. This is not a good scenario for him. I am also reliably informed that Machako's governor, Alfred Mutua, and his Makweni counterpart, Kibuda Kibwana, were also invited to State House Mombasa. Considering that charity Kaluki Ngilu, the governor of Kitui, also from Okambani, is firmly in the camp of President Huru Kenyatta, very firmly, it would mean that again if we had a popularity contest today in Okambani, a ticket consisting of Ngilu, Alfred Mutua, and Kivuda Kibwana would beat Kalonzo Musioka at 6 a.m. in the morning. So you now see why I'm saying this one Kenya hula baloo <laughs> is insignificant in Kenyan politics. It means zero unless they get outside support from two individuals, William Samoy Ruto or Raila Odinga. This one Kenya thing is a non-starter. Of course, Kenyans are very excited about it. And that is why some people have sold a lot of newspapers by having stories concerning that outfit. Yeah. And the leaked saga, allegedly, from State House Mombasa. Some newspapers have made a killing selling newspapers with that headline. Which is okay. Indeed, those newspaper editors are very smart. They're doing their job perfectly. Nothing wrong with that. But meanwhile, gullible Kenyans are being confused. The attention of Kenyans is being diverted away from what is really happening. And I'm slowly getting convinced that what is happening may be Mukisa Kitui. You will remember those who are regulars on this channel, that not too long ago, I did a video on the secret candidate of the Super Alliance. The Super Alliance that is still under construction. Yeah. And I mentioned two names. Alfred Mutua, governor of Machakos, and James Agri Orengo. I now take this opportunity to add in that list Mukisa Kitui. I want to remind you of the take-home lesson from today's show yet again. Always assume that your opponents are much smarter than you are. That should help you in many instances to realize that you are being drawn into a trap. Because this is politics. This is high stakes national politics. Traps are normal. Diverting people's attentions yeah, while you do what you really want to do is normal. And let me also remind you that Kenyans are gambling. And we already have quite a few winners. People who have taken the step to send a blank email to the email address you see on your screens right now and they have received an automated response of an offer that ended an amazing offer the 1982 offer for life membership to WIB where you will also learn many other shocking things that are unfolding in Kenyan politics you will also get to see stories that you have already taken in and swallowed <laughs> you'll get to see those same stories in a completely different 
light based on inside information. Thanks a lot for your time, folks. Until next time, this is Chris Komekocha.